like this. The woman who Koji believes was just a normal doctor waves her sawed-off shotgun menacingly as she continues, her sharp tone and bitter. She has glasses. My reaction right now. <laughs> <laughs> Koji listens in silence, helpless to do anything but watch as understanding moves farther and farther out of his grasp. Well, actually, I gotta correct General Hanuish on something. Um, it's not just a uh, concealment. A sawed off shotgun, if you put it right into somebody's general vicinity and fire point blank, it will hit all of their body! It is a fuck you up weapon at, sh at close range. That's you, all. If you get hit at close range from a sh sh sawed off shotgun, you are not surviving. Look at this, or if you do. You, you, your body will look like hamburger meat. Your life is literally ruined. Oh yeah, no, you can get point blank hit with a shotgun in the face and survive it. It's just not gonna go well for you. Um, I've seen it, by the way. Oh. By the way, look at her face. She's so... Like, is there is there a button for just, like, hide can, everything? Yeah, can, can we please? I want that. I'm scared of, like, hitting the wrong thing. I know, I understand. Also, we haven't saved in, like, forever. How do we save again? Oh my god, we need to save. I'm not doing all this again. I don't remember. Hello, cool skeleton. Nice to have you in with us today. Oh god, we're like, we're, we're actually gonna have to finish this. Okay, so we don't have enter. to save. We don't have to save, so we will actually have to finish this. Let's do it. No, let's just do it, man. We gotta, we gotta get through it. With a light in her left hand and a shotgun in her right, Ryoko walks up the door and takes a deep breath. Then, she kicks the door open, putting her full weight behind the blow. Oh, God, I want to be this woman. I want to be her. Can I, I want to be her when I grow up. Can I be her when I grow up? Yes. Okay. With a disappointingly feeble sound, the door breaks off its hinges and falls into the room. Dust billows like white smoke in the beam of Ryoko's light. The room is large, at least 35 meters square, and the tiled floor is set with drainage grates. There's no mistaking the operating table sitting in the middle of the room. Cabinets full of enamelware and drugs lie on one side of the space. Against the opposite wall stand a writing desk and bookshelves. I could live there. Even Koji can recognize that much. The mysterious objects cluttering the tables and shelves, however, are beyond his comprehension. Mirrors delicately engraved with complex patterns, grotesque statues, and masks that have been left by by a race of savages, tapestries woven in nauseating arrays of color, a crystal ball the size of an infant's head. Any would fetch a hefty price at an antique store, if not for the one thing they all have in common. Every last piece is so loathsome and foul that Koji just feels sick looking at it. It's as though each was designed for the sole sinister purpose of immortalizing its creator's hatred of the world. Rare looking borks. Borks! Bork! <laughs> bork, bork! Oh, my, my, my voice is a little shattered. Um, do you want to take a break and I'll three? Yeah, that'd be great. All I ask is that when I finish this drink, you go pour me another that's mostly cola. I can do that. Thank you. I need to do one for myself, too. That's mostly cola. All right, let me have, like, a sip. Fin finish this, and I'll finish this. Okay. We're looking books of the sword he found in Ogai's home are piled here and there, and on one shelf are stacked some scrolls that look to be made of some sort of sheepskin or papyrus. Human skin! <laughs> it's human skin! By the way, I've held a book um, bound in human skin before. It was weird. I was in England. Oh. Yeah. Jesus. Um, apparently, if you really fucked up occasionally, they would take your skin and then make you into a book, and in the inner binding, they write a message to people about what you'd done to be turned into a book after your execution. Jesus. The person I held had apparently killed their wife. Oh, yeah, no, fuck that guy. Yeah, no, he, he'd been turned into a book, and I held, uh, I held it. That's some broken binding shit. It is. You can see the pores in the skin even after it's been leatherized. Oh my god. I'm a weird person, guys. Deal with it. Whatever it is, it's not paper. 
Finally, there are indecipherable chalk patterns and symbols filling every available space on the walls. Even the two sliding blackboards are covered in strange, unreadable scribblings. Just looking at them is making Koji dizzy. Oh, apparently, Priest, you sound like a lost narrator. What? Aww. It can't be me. I don't sound like a lost narrator. All right, it is person A that sounds like the lost narrator? Or do I sound like Losty? I don't sound like Losty. Oh, wow. I don't think I can do a rainbow dash. Try. It needs to be like 20% cooler. Oh my god. It needs to be like 20%. I can't do Rainbow Dash. That's oh so rainbow. <laughs> like, I can. Wow, Rainbow Dash! That's really cool! <laughs> like, I can do that. Um, you're, you're way better at Fluttershy, so. Um, thank you. I, I really think I try hard, and I appreciate you saying that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like I need another drink or anything. Priest, would you go give me a drink? Appaloosa! Give me a drink, bitch. Okay, fine. <laughs> Do you want Cheez-Its? Uh, I would not. Okay. I would like a drink. Oh, what's that? What's what? Loud noise. That was all. It's okay. Um, and I'm gonna click through my waifu some more, okay? Oh, actually, I'm gonna do a shout out! Okay? Oh, yeah, we haven't done that. Hi, Alex underscore hi, Brian Nichols, hi, Commander Root. Hi, Cool Skeleton 896. I don't know you very well, but it's nice to have you here. Hi, Dash Leblon, hi, Decasmer, hi, Dr. Ashen Plague, hi, General Honoich, hi, Mobile Sam 116, hi, Slowpool, hi, The Walking Broccoli, hi, VNK, hi, Burger Pros. Nice to have you here. We're working on Saya, Song of Saya, Saya no Uta. Let's, um, let's get through this. Sorry, I had a moment. Don't look back and don't run. You must never run from anything immortal that attracts their attention. I don't expect any of you to get that reference, and that's fine. That's fine. No, I, I had a last minute moment. Sorry, General Hanoish. I. Damn you, Peter S. Beagle. Ryoka switches her light's fluorescent runners on and sets it on a nearby table where it can illuminate the whole room. She then holsters her shotgun, only to pull out an even more confusing set of tools, a digital camera, and a can of spray paint. She gives the can in her left hand a good shake, switches the camera in her right hand on, and steps up to the blackboard while looking at the camera side mounted screen. After recording one set of symbols, she covers it with a thick layer of paint, Yes, that was good. Then moves on to the next. Lesson number one. Anyway. Wow, um, if I followed that, I never would have graduated. I, I minored in classical mythology. Shit, don't look at Latin, apparently, guys. You learned it here first. I mean, I looked at primary documents in Latin, so whatever, man. Sorry, I should read that out loud. Now she mentions it, Koji realizes that she's only looking at the screen of her camera. Even then, only in short glimpses, and never directly doing the drawings. This is some Harry Potter rules shit about, like, basilisks. Jesus. She understands what she's saying. He understands what she's saying, but it still doesn't make any sense. Semper Ubi Sub Ubi, bitches. You don't know what that means, look it up. Also look up Mala 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 Mala. It'll be fun. Trust me, you'll have a great time. God, I love her! Ugh. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty sure I know why I'm in love with her. And I'm pretty sure Priest is gonna be in love with her too when I say something when he comes back. 
It's mala, 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 mala. Um, it, it has to do with Latin conjugation. It's a lovely inside joke with um, anyone who's studied Latin before. Koji begins to fear that this doctor might be even crazier than Minori. She's not. Despite the burst of energy he received from the vodka, Koji is still exhausted from his night in the well. No shit. The fear is affecting his body, making him dizzy and nauseous. Nauseated. Soon the walls are covered in black paint, and the stale air is thick with the smell of turpentine. I know why I love her. Why? She's sick? She's Dean Winchester. Oh my god. No, seriously, she just started spray painting over things in Latin and told him not to read things or break any crystal balls or, like, touch anything that looks supernatural because it could kill her. She's wearing the trench coat. She has the sawed-off shotgun. And, like, the vodka. And she's just, like, instructing him, which means... Does no. she like pie? She must! She must. She must! I bet she likes tiny Asian cakes you get in the nice little bakeries like Satura. <gasps> oh. Go, go with me to Satura Cakes when you get to California again. Will do. Thank you. Mwah. Anyway, your turn. Oh, okay. Where are we at? Just, just click the button. It's ready. <clears throat> Thank you. It's mostly cola? Yeah. Did you mix it? N yes. There's no ice in it. We don't have any ice now. Even in the ice room? Yes. Ice trays are empty. I should have too. Okay. I saw some mice in there, so. Okay. Read the thing, do the thing, talk to them. Koji asks, supporting himself against a nearby table. Without stopping her examination of the papers on the writing table, Ryoko points nonchalantly to a Chinese style screen standing in one corner of the room. He was there. Her clinical choice of tense makes her meaning instantly obvious. The urge to see for himself is irresistible. Koji staggers across the room to the screen, making the utmost care not to look at the scaly octopus thing that is painted on it. Your ice tray had two ice cubes in it and it's part of a third. Wow. I don't know why. I'm silly. Okay, we'll fill it up later. Okay. Behind the screen is a large easy chair. Although he's never met the man before, Koji's fairly certain that this person sitting in it is Ogai Masahiko. Ogai's corpse must have shrunk significantly while drying in this sealed chamber. The body is barely the size of a child, with the only business suit hanging off the bones, offering any hint of Ogai's former stature. His empty eye sockets and the wide open jaw are filled with darkness. The same darkness that surrounded Koji at the bottom of the well. Darkness! Imprisoning me! All that I say! Sorry. Absolute savings! <laughs> I love you. Compared to those gaping voids, the tiny hole in Ogai's right temple is almost demure. Hey priest, I'll give you my gaping void and my tiny hole. Hell yes. Please don't touch me. I can't believe I just said that. I feel so dirty. I can't wait to fill them. Please stop! Please read. Okay. <laughs> the resolver... The revolver that he presumably used to kill himself is still clenched in the dangling right hand. It looks like a child's toy compared to Ryoko's shotgun. Ryoko must have noticed Ogai's corpse while she was spray painting the walls, and still she kept working without batting an eyelash. Impressive, though not exactly surprising after what he's been through. Priest X pencil. Does somebody want to tell him? Someone's got to tell him. Someone should tell him. Don't you dare. I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> hey, cool skeleton, we're dating. Yeah, we're, we actually are fucking, so, you know, go ahead, write a fanfic. Anyway, it'll, it'll just stroke our tiny egos. My tiny ego. Please don't. Please don't write fanfics about Priest and I. That's happened once, and it was weird. It was taken down for, like, being too meta. Yes. <laughs> anyway, continue. Impressive, though not exactly surprising after what he's been through. It's getting difficult to remember the last time he spoke to someone sane. But if not for her, Koji reminds himself with a bitter smirk. 
he would have ended up joining this mummified corpse here, and no one would have ever found him. Oh my god, is Koji fainting? What a little bitch. Dr. Tran wouldn't faint. Koji's vision suddenly dims. He's pushed himself too hard, and this Spiritus Vodka can't help him anymore. Spiritus! Spiritus Sancti! Oh. Sorry, I'm just gonna yell Latin at you. We've been doing that for a while, actually. Okay. Because she's like, never look at something written in Latin with the naked eye, and I was like, wow, I would have failed my glasses. I'm standing there looking at actual gravestones in Greece, reading, like, hey, there's Latin on this. This much mean that it, this happened after the Romans were like, hey, fuck you, Greece, and came over to Greece. Sorry. He collapses to the floor, unable to hang on to his slipping consciousness. And the last thing he sees are Ogai Masahiko's gaping eye sockets staring at him. When he wakes, Koji finds himself lying on something dry and soft. Is he gonna sex the doctor? Can I read it, if he does? Yeah. Okay. A bed is a bed, he thinks to himself. Even one that smells of mold and dust, especially after sleeping in cold mud all night. There are no lights hanging from the ceiling, but the soft, warm light of a lamp fills the room. Simple furnishings, non-existent decor. Koji realizes that he's in Ogai's cabin, in the bedroom that he had searched before Fuminori pushed him into the well. How did he get out of the well? Um, she ha she probably knew how to get back. Like, God knows she probably had like a grappling hook or some shit in there. But how did she pull him up? She's Dr. Fucking Tran. Okay, I, I get that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she's eating a sandwich. She's Dean Winchester. I can bring you pizza. I know, but like she's she is Dean Winchester. Okay, yes. Because him and sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. Ryoko is sitting in a chair against the wall, her expression blank as she studies the pile of documents on the table in front of her. She must have brought them up from Ogai's underground lab. She turns a page and takes a bite from the sandwich in her free hand. See? If there's pie, we're done. Without looking up from the file, she gestures towards the convenience store bag sitting on the nightstand. Koji can't imagine that a woman, even a woman like Ryoko, could have climbed out of the well with him on her back. Oh, cool skeleton thought her genders were swapped. Oh. No, priest is a boy. Um, a non is a girl. I understand from our writing. You write very romantic, sweet, mushy sex stuff. I write things about vomit and death. It's true. But that's why we work. Aw. Aw. Hey. You what? Mwah. Gross. I love you. Love you too. <sighs> ah! That explains things. Ryoko mutters, taking care not to let the explanation interfere with her reading or eating. ベストの Having finished her sandwich, Ryoko picks up some of the orange sorted papers with her free hand and waves them in the air. Koji still hasn't had the slightest idea what Ogai's secret might have been. But from what Ryoko said in the tunnel, however, he can guess that Fuminori is somehow involved. Koji asks desperately, no longer caring who he gets the answers from.
Ryoko lies co replies coldly, as though Koji's concerns are of note of hers. None of hers. God, I hope they fuck. She deserves nice things. It's true. I mean, Koji doesn't sound like he's very good at anything. But you never know. Ryoko pulls several sheets of loose leaf paper from a different file. Ryoko pauses and then looks sidelong at Koji. <gasps> it's happening! Um, by the way, would you like me to take off for a little bit? That'd be nice. Yeah. Okay, sure. You do the clicking? Yeah, sure. She sighs bitterly and then returns her attention to the papers in her hand. The icy certainty in Ryoko's voice sends a chill down Koji's spine. He has to ask, even though he already knows the answer. No, it won't! You're wrong! You don't know shit, honey! Ryoko doesn't respond. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Ryoko doesn't respond as though she didn't hear what Koji just said. Sorry, just don't understand why I had trouble. <laughs> because what came to my mind? Past the point of no return, no turning back now. Do you know? Go on. What long and broken secrets will we learn? We've passed the point of no return. It's a phantom in here. Oh. It's been a while. I'm you sorry. have come here without knowing the reason why. Okay, when she's on stage and she's in the play. Yeah, that. Are you okay? No! Let's go. The walking broccoli got it. <laughs>君は警察の仕事について広く勘違いしている。彼らの職分は正義を貫くことでも市民の安全を守ることでもない。そんな無情理な物事について、きちんと情理に沿った体裁を整える。これ彼らの思考はいつだってより理解しやすい。I do a lot of talking. So I don't know. それこそ水が低い方へ低い方へと流れていくように。事実がどうあろうと彼らには興味ない。彼らが感知するところではないんだよ。小説より決める事実なんてものは。そこまで決めつけることないでしょう。話してみなければわかりませんよ。She'll bitch slap you. She will. She's just eating all these sandwiches. I fucking love her. She hasn't spared Koji a second glance until looking at him earlier. Even while talking, her attention has always been on the paper in front of her. 
君が作動した信用の手で殺せる。警察はあと二つばかり真実の方法を用意するだろう。Oh my god, I love it. 君が狂言自殺で親友を落とし入れようとしてるとかあるいはもっとシンプルに事故で井戸に落ちた君が錯乱して親友を疑ってる<笑>この3案のどれかが捜査っていうレースで勝ちを競うわけだ勝ち馬は誰にもわからないこんな博打に君は信頼潰すまでかける機会Really explain with cold, clear logic what drove Fuminor to do what he did? How can he convince anyone else when he doesn't even understand it himself? So, the one who is a man 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 who is a 神殿で火の手が上がれば彼は手遅れになる前にさっさと姿を変えなきゃいけない。そうやってやるとダンジンが振り出しに戻る。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う
そりゃ何十時間前の話かね Yeah, she's gonna put shotgun shells into that lady's head. I'm、mm -hmm. sorry, yo, you're done, honey. Baby, you're done.、Mm. Got it on a beat, my bro. I wanna, I wanna be that coldly logical when I need to be. Yeah. No, and that's why I like her. Sorry, I can't see that. Masa, I eat it to a woman. And yeah, the walking broccoli is right. She's worse than dead. Yo is worse than dead, I would、that's、argue.、True. Death would be an improvement. Mm hmm. It's futile to argue with this woman, Koji realizes. Her values are fundamentally different from his own. Nothing he can say will ever move her. Koji gets out of bed and stands on shaky legs. Long enough. <sighs> Koji looks at his watch and sees it's four in the morning, which means that it was already early evening when Ryoko rested him. Rested him. Rescued him. He can't believe that he survived in that well almost two days. That's actually really not surprising. He was surrounded by water. That's not shocking. Now that the gaps in his memory have filled and his sense of time has returned, he realizes that it's already Sunday morning. Ryoko's right. A lot of time has passed since he spoke to Yo on the phone. Koji grabs a sports drink and two jelly snacks from the. Jelly snacks? Jelly snacks from the bag of food that Ryoko brought, then heads for the door. His legs are still a little unsteady, but he can compensate for that with sheer willpower. Are you sure that's not how it works? No. Okay, just checking. We know where he's going. We know where he's going. Tokyo. Yeah. Alright, Captain Hot Dog, good luck. What do you need? Some more? I don't know. I just said you warm. Yeah. Do you want to go take a brief walk outside while I do some of this? No, that's fine. Okay. I just have to hold it because I'm small. You could always take off your clothes, priest. Take off those pants and that shirt.、Oh. Yeah, take off your clothes. I'm not gonna talk in that voice anymore because it makes me hate my life. Um, Koji's expecting Ryoko to watch him go with that cold, mocking smile of hers. Instead, however, she sighs heavily and rests her jaw in her hands. <laughs> You know what? Yeah. Hey, chat. It's been a long day. We're playing a weird game. Let's all take off our clothes. Everybody, get naked. We're gonna play this naked together. We're all gonna get naked and watch sex scenes in a non-sexual way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's all get naked together. Yes. It's gonna be a, a together very, a very communal naked. Welcome、time. to the naked closet. Where. We get more naked every week. You come up with the slogans. You're good at that. Where the only thing lower than the bar is where our clothes are. I was like, is our panties? Oh, I like that. Yay! Together, we did this together. Wait, does that mean I wear panties? Uh, if I ask you to. <laughs> Oh 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 oh! Wait 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 wait! Just to make priest sing a song. Yeah. Oh, the cool skeleton! I'm halfway there. 
Oh! <laughs> prayer. I knew you'd do it if I oh. pointed it to you. All right. Priest, Priest doesn't wear panties. I wear panties. The thing is, he loves me, and he'd do nice things for me. But he doesn't wear panties. It's true. He wears boxers. I've seen them on the floor many times. They look better on the floor. They do. In truth, Koji's extremely uneasy about going it alone. At the same time, however, he knows that he mustn't depend on Ryoko. He's made it clear that she doesn't care about saving lives. Teamed up with her will only make it more difficult to salvage something, anything out of this nightmare. She picks up something from the table and casually tosses it to Koji. It's a gun! It's a gun! It's a gun! It's a gun! Koji stares at the menacing shape of cold metal and wood. It's a revolver. Same one that was clenched again in Ogai's skeletal fist. It's a suicide gun? That thing hasn't been fired in how long? Oh shit. That's not a good idea. That's a terrible idea. You yeah. need to clean the barrel and do perform basin maintenance. It's probably rusted as hell if it's been there for that long. It could just straight up backfire. Worse than that if it jams? Yeah. Yeah. It could destroy the gun. Fuck him. It could destroy the gun. The bolts have been sitting there for four years. What are the odds they haven't gotten wet? Yeah. Like, keep your fucking powder dry, kids. Oh. <laughs> if Koji were his usual cautious self, he would reject the dangerous offering. Truly, no good can come from the barrel of a gun. Ha! <laughs> And yet, without knowing it, Koji's already set foot in Ryoka's world. Choosing instinct over reason, he accepts the small but deadly weapon and slides it in his pocket. By the way, the chat right now thought you'd like this. <laughs> <laughs> Guns and booze lessons with pencil. Please don't take my gun lessons, seriously. There are many more people who are much more knowledgeable than me on firearms. Um, the most I can honestly tell you is from personal experience and uh, and history, and that's about all. I have several hunting licenses. He's he's much more knowledgeable than I am, frankly. It's and great. I, and I hope he'll call me out if I get something wrong. Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you. There's no question that Koji intends to save Yo and bring Fuminori to answer for his crimes. In the back of his mind, however, he can hear the footsteps of ruin approaching. Actually, you know, like... One wonders can gently gesture the sentence as one of the best sentences written in this game. Yes. That's lovely and ominous and has feelings to it. Yes. Compared to, he puts his exploding penis inside of her. Jesus Christ. Oh. When he steps out of the cabin's front door, Koji shivers as the wind tears into his skin. To his surprise, the cold outside air is even colder than the mud at the bottom of the well. Perhaps the cramped space mitigated the cold somewhat. If he had been exposed to this chill all night long, he surely would have frozen to death. Koji finds two cars parked in the yard. The Mini next to his Accord must be Ryoko's. She drives a Mini. Aww. Aww. Okay, sorry. Uh, when he sits behind the wheel of the car, he gets some relief from the feeling that he has taken the first step, however small, back into his world. You're wrong, honey. He, slips the, he sips the sports drink, wetting his parched throat, then washes down some jelly. His stomach rebels at the sudden influx of food and water after three six hours on empty, but he manages to force the, down the urge to vomit. Actually, you know, I, I've eaten lychee jelly on an empty stomach when I'm not feeling well. It's lovely. It's, 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 it's so easy on the time. Oh. It really is. Like, lychee jelly is my shit when I'm not feeling well, and it costs a fortune, which is why I never eat it. Right. Koji needs the energy. No matter how hard it is, he must regain enough stamina to overcome the challenges ahead. After forcing down as much food as he can handle, Koji leans back in his seat and takes a short break. When he begins to feel like himself again, he reaches back into the back seat and pulls his spare cell phone out of his bag. Who has a spare cell phone? Second cell phone. He never expected that carrying two phones would be such a stroke of luck. Yeah, why did like, you have like it? it's a convenient plot device. Why did you have it then? Like, why would you have it? If he's you... having an affair. With who? His girlfriend's dead. Yo. Yo, he's, he's banging yo? I guess. That would change so much of this. <laughs> After he calls up food, why would you call 
Fuminori. Why? Rage, despair, sorrow, pity. He's unable to decide what to feel towards his friend. It's not your friend. He tried to kill you. However, there's no time to dwell on the past. Every second lost diminishes the chance of saving Omi. Omi's been dead for so long, bro. She's been dead for weeks. Koji refuses to consider that it already may be too late. Of all the people you call, why do you call the person who's trying to kill you? Yeah. He steals himself and presses the button, then holds the phone to his ear, and it rings. The shrill sound seems to go on for longer than it ever has in his life. Shh. Can't talk right now, raping your ex-girlfriend. Right now, Fuminori's phone must be displaying the name of the caller. Koji wonders what the reaction will be when he sees it. The call goes through. Why would you do this? The sound's on the other end of the phone. Koji senses surprise, apprehension, and dark fury. Through a phone call? Through a phone call. I mean... Feeling slightly gratified, Koji delivers the first jab. Well, now he knows he has to come kill you. You've lost the element of surprise. Exactly, Why right? This? this was such a bad idea. God, good lord. As Cody's about to answer, an idea suddenly comes to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't. Why are you just telling the truth? That's not a plan. That's just telling the truth. <laughs> Jesus fuck, man. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. He pauses to let that sink in. Then, with satisfaction filling his voice, he says... Okay, that's a plan. <laughs> Sounds like sex noises. Fuminori's gasp tells Koji that the advantage is his. It's not. You're dumb. Keeping his voice bold, he decides to further exaggerate the truth. Good job dropping Saya's name, actually. Oh, the perfect. He's still gonna kill you now. Like, what do you think is going on? Now he's just gonna kill you even more deader. Yeah, like... And maybe know, rape He him. might make you a sex doll for Saya as a gift. I made you this Saya. Just like you won't see Saya coming. Honey, honey, honey. Ah. Kso. Kso does not mean you son of a bitch. I know that phrase. Kso is basically fuck. It's it's shit. Kso. It's obvious from Fuminer's tone that rage has overwhelmed his reason. Koji's bluff is working perfectly. You're wrong. It's not. You're stupid. Um, his victory is tainted, however, as Fuminori's response to the name Saya brings a cry of anguish from the corner of his heart that still wants to believe his friend can be saved. Why would you believe this? He tried to kill you. <laughs> then he's fucked. Then you're fucked. Everything's fucked. You're stupid. Ryoko's words play back in his head, sounding even colder than before. Because she's right! Fast. The point of no... Return! Since there is one person in the chat, at least you get that reference. Yay! We mustn't allow emotion to sway him. Omi's in my belly! Koji suddenly switches topics, trying to keep Fuminori off balance. Good idea. It's all, it all comes down to this. Dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. 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 Omi's dead, dude. What do you want? And Yo's pretty much dead. Fuminori's voice trails off. He's obviously trying to decide how far Koji can be trusted, and whether there's room for negotiation. Fuminori has been called out, and now it's time for him to show his hand. Actually, that's true. Fuminori yeah, no. Doesn't... Fuminori doesn't actually know what happened to Omi. Yeah, Omi was killed by Saya, and then he ate her thinking it was really nice food. Yeah. And didn't know that he was eating her... I think her boobs, actually, was what he ended up eating. Yeah. The first thing he ate was boobs. Um, so, that's true. He's not lying. But Umi... Like, um, Umi's, Umi's very dead. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway. Fuminori pauses and gives a knowing chuckle that sends chills up Koji's spine. Storm? It's, it's helping. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. We did not get an option on who to call. We, have, we haven't had a decision in a long ass time. Our decisions were like, actually look at what Saya looks like and not. Well, we've had a couple of other decisions too, early on. Yeah. But, we but they seemed like instant death decisions. Yeah, it, it really felt like here, here are all the bad end decisions. So far we've made the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is supposed to be an eight hour game. You, now I see. <laughs> Sorry. Staring straight back at me. When will my reflection show? When you'll be silent. You go, Christine, honest. Sorry. When will my reflection show? All right. God, it's, girls got pipes. Fuck, man. Koji is relieved to learn lo Yo's location and that she is at least still alive. At the same time, however, he remembers that horrifying phone call. It's clear now that Fuminori played some parts in Neo's suffering. Had she already fallen into his trap back then? What has happened to her? How is she being treated? Skeleton's version of what, we, what he was hearing. And you'll be in a world of pure imagination. What you see will defy explanation. I wrote a song to that about Charlie urinating. It's true. Anyway, sorry. Having fun. Drinking. It's great. No, that's fine. Slaves. Slaves! Koji feels despair. So despair! Uh, so. Sorry. <laughs> Having fun. Good. How much lower will this man go? Must Fuminori seek out and destroy every memory of the friendship they once shared? Yes! Please do! He hangs up without waiting for a response. Fuminori doesn't know that Koji is still in, at the cabin in Tochigi. Right now, he's probably worrying about whether Koji will show up in one hour or one minute. Koji hopes that he'll be able to take advantage of Fuminori's confusion. Or you could have just not called! Three hours. That's how long it'll take to race all the way back to Tokyo. Koji is afraid that his body won't carry him through such a long drive. His mind is clear, but his limbs still feel half asleep. Like they're weighted down with lead. Although he knows that he has to stay resolute, Koji still longs for the peace he had just a few days ago. But life or death struggles were the farthest thing from his mind. Back then, he could have never have imagined himself fighting to rescue a friend from the clutches of a madman. With each passing moment, he feels himself becoming less like the person he was. When all of this is over, Will he be able to return to his old life? Or will this strange change continue until it has consumed him utterly? Time is against him. Every second that passes is wasted. Even so, he allows decides to allow himself just five minutes of weakness. The clock ticks life away. For exactly five minutes, he leans against the steering wheel and cries. And when his tears have run dry and his heart is calm, Koji starts up his accord and drives away. It's so unreal. That sounds like sex. I will get ready to turn that off. 
Is, it, is, is it she there? just like sucking his dick? I think he's just she she's just sucking his dick while it's happening. This is it, right? Uh, that's yes. Test it. Just a test. Okay. All right, click away. I'll I'll do what I can. I stare at the silent phone in my hand. There's anger, of course, but something cold and heavy holds my emotions in check. Sorry, his mouth. The sense of danger. To be honest, I'm surprised at how calm I am. Up, oh, up. Oh, I clicked it. It didn't. It didn't stop. It, it's not stopping. There it goes. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm shit. I tried. I didn't know it was gonna happen that soon. We're gonna cut it out. I'm so sorry. Fuck. I really tried. It wouldn't stop. You saw me click it. It wouldn't go. Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's already gone. General Honoish. No. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I really tried. It's hard to know when this game is gonna do shit like that. She speaks now? I'm not gonna explain what the sex scene looked like to you guys. Because you saw it. Yes. What sort of voice should I do for her? Um... Just try to be nice and feminine for us. I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> Master? Oh god. Yo looks up at me. <clears throat> Yo looks at me apprehensively, her head between my thighs. She was attending to my manhood throughout the call. Perhaps mistaking my silence for annoyance, she desperately rubs her breasts against my shaft and attacks the head of my penis with her tongue. The remaining fragments of her memory seem to have joined together as she has regained some degree of speech. Upon realizing the last night, Zaya began to teach her language once more. I assume she finds our pet's efforts amusing. Don't be mad. Yo, will try harder. Still gazing at me pleadingly, Yo sucks my penis without even taking the time to breathe. Uh. Finally! Oh god, that was better. Her ministrations threaten to fill my head with a white fog of pleasure that would impede my thoughts. And besides, my arousal has already vanished. At first, I consider making her stop. When I gaze into her puppy dog eyes, however, I begin to think differently. Thanks to Saya, I have a family once again. For the first time, I'm becoming aware of my responsibil of the responsibility that places on me. I am now the head of the new Saki Saka household, as well as the only male member. It is my duty to protect, comfort, and ensure the happiness of the women living under my roof. With that in mind, I know that I mustn't show fear or confusion. That would only cause them distress. Continue. Yes, master. I entrust my manhood to Yo's ripe breasts, basking in their pleasure with one part of my mind while contemplating our current predicament with the other. It is clear that I have made a grave error when I failed to finish Koji off two days ago. Right now, I need to set my frustration and anger aside and deal with the problem logically. It's time to leave. I have no way of knowing when Koji escaped the well, or how much he has learned, or how many people he has contacted since then. Now that it is impossible for me to know how far the problem has spread, merely disposing of Koji won't guarantee our safety. When the enemy has poisoned your water supply, you can't take the risk that even one drop might remain. Your only choice is to stop drinking the water. Up! Oh, I think we're good now! Can I go back to my normal girl voice? Yes. I clicked it so many times, Priest. I really tried. I tried so hard, and it it's just... Okay. It, uh, it's okay. It's uh, okay. Nothing a little editing can't fix. Uh, I had to pull Enigma's face back up, so that way bug. I can cover things. Bug. I'm ready, though. Saya returns from the kitchen, where she had gone in search of a midnight snack. She'd been munching on her favorite, spare ribs. I mean, I like spare ribs too, but that's... Uh, and from an animal. Sure. You look so upset. <laughs> Purging myself of unease and impatience, I responded with a casual shrug.
Karama. By breaking the news suddenly without any trace of my anxiety, I'm able to avoid frightening Saya. Instead, she is merely surprised. I knew that remaining calm would work. Yeah, it is probably Omi's ribs, I'll be honest. Good night, Dr. Ashplague. Moreover, I'm currently getting my penis sucked by Yo. It would be hard for anyone to get too serious under these circumstances. <laughs> That's true. They're all dead, and you're eating them, so... I can tell she's reluctant to leave, but at least there's no sadness in her expression. Everything will be fine. I will protect my life with Saya just as I have up until now. I have that power. Do you though? Knowing that we've overcome one problem fills me with new confidence. <laughs> oh god, okay, hold on. Let me make sure I'm just gonna do it now, because just in case. Saya hastily discards her sparrows and pushes the still sucking yo off of me. Ah good. Wow. Fuminori, you're never this hard when you make love to me. Yeah, that's so rude. Well, that's... <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, explain the sex scene, priest. We have... Saya gently caressing and stroking the penis. And she is fully naked now, and we see her little pink nips. And where is the head of the dick? The head of the dick is right against her lips. And she's giving me this great- actually, that is a really, like, erotic picture, I'll, I'll at least finally acknowledge. Because that looks consensual. Yeah. That's one of the few consensual pics I've seen in this fucking whole thing. Despite her scolding tone, Saya- oh wait, no, screen oh, black. to me. So, <clears throat> Despite her scolding tone, Saya gently and passionately wraps her mouth around my manhood. Oh, stop, stop, I hate that noise. Fuck, stop. Oh, God, please stop. Ugh. With my orgasm already charged up by Yo, Saya's ravenous tongue and throat push me over the edge instantly. Saya, I'm... Come on, give me your... It's already starting to happen. Before Saya finishes, I thrust deep in her throat and unleash my lust as I stare into her eyes, wide with surprise. Oh god. Oh, oh, oh. oh god, stop making gulping noises. Ugh. Even while moaning around my penis, Saya grabs me firmly by the waist and swallows all of my seed without choking. Who chokes on cum? There's not that like I mean I guess people choke on cum. Ooh! You know what we can do? Oh Turn on the cam! It's even in the right spot. I'm not wearing a shirt. Okay, that's fair. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Never mind, never mind. Say it though. Plah! That was good! You're so greedy, Saya. I say, smiling wryly as I look at Yo, who's lying limply on the floor. You always keep it all for yourself. Of course! I won't forgive you if you give it to any other woman! After baring her teeth at me grumpily, she burrows her face into my stomach. I'm serious, okay? I'll fucking kill you. Please, that's not what it says! I'm serious, okay? It's adorable how Saya goes from angry to pleading like this. I find myself reaching down to muss up her hair. Don't worry. I won't. Now then, we'd better get ready. Okay! I think we're good to go. So I'm going to turn this back on now. We can travel light and take Suzumi to take the Suzumi family car. That is fair. You actually do have that, yeah. 